Good morning, folks. New blog post on the official ISON observing campaign gives an underwhelming description of the potential breakup or survival possibilities of ISON. The comet has now begun to brighten considerably, according to Bruce Gary's site, which is anything but underwhelming. He noted a change to the brightening rate, and if you'll remember, this is expected. Remember we showed you how ISON was going to cross the solar system equatorial plane right at the time that that big far side CME was set to potentially hit the comet. Can't say for sure that was the genesis of the current brightening, but the timing is perfect. This really grinds my gears when most rocky bodies contain carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. and solar wind pumps out every known element according to NASA. Where is the need for such a theory as this? is even before you consider anything about star water. Let's come now to a look back to Alaska in October. They were checking their calendars in confusion at the heat and here's why. Clockwise high pressure stuck with the left side driving heat north. Now let's come east to see the low in the northeast drawing the counterclockwise up and a big clockwise driving high pressure system out west. Now that high driving cold air south into the midwest on the clockwise drive while heat was drawing up the leading edge of the convergence to the low, causing those major temperature differentials. Other top weather watches? First in New Zealand, low pressure is a clockwise mover in the southern hemisphere, and the storms are continuing here. Final watch is quite obviously the super typhoon. Remnants to the west are flooding southern Asia, while the Philippines better prepare for this leviathan. Solar wind showing two interplanetary shocks. Yesterday's did not do much at all, but the latest ramp of both speed and density has finally begun to peck away at our stability. KP rising, with the sensitive charts indicating moderate levels of disturbance only. We clearly continue to take M flares here, perhaps entering a little lull. These vents are ramping up the polar radiation in the form of high energy protons you see here. The major flares since we last spoke here more aesthetically beautiful than dangerous. But while I've got your attention here, what the heck happened in yesterday's comments? You guys know better than to get baited by the trolls, and a lot of time and effort was wasted on your parts. You see these trolls who can't seem to come up with anything new to claim? Fine. Go to the About and FAQ on my website and try not to laugh at what they're saying. But a warning. If you watch and enjoy the anti-SO communities on YouTube, Sharing these facts will get you blocked from those sites. Doesn't exactly fit their talking points. And while we're here, 100 questions about this every day, so here's where you log into your account. Here's where you click to become a member. Public forums are the only thing not back up at this time. Gracias por tu paciencia. We're back to the news and focused on the two Earth-facing groups. Big Daddy and back with the developing newbies as well. Starting with the flare maker, you see technical delta spots, three of them actually, but this is majorly faded and the rest of this group decayed as well. Meanwhile, the little guy out front actually has a delta spot despite his tiny overall size. He's actually beta delta as I do not see a gamma class here. You'll remember, we were smack dab in the middle of a quake uptick with all factors hitting. Then the solar magnetics went a little ballistic. Since then, we've been quiet. We've got a corona hole facing Earth today with more coming in down south. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.